So we all kind of, you know, fabricate the truth. And when it comes to lying and CVs, I don't, and I think there's a person exist out there that hasn't lied on their CV, like even a little bit, like, you know, and I mean, and I mean in the most innocent way possible, whether it's like, you know, you were at a company for less than a year, but then you rounded it up to a year or whether it was, um, you worked as an assistant, but you left the assistant bit off your list or whatever it may be. Has anyone done that? Cause I know I haven't. And in the beginning I did. And in the beginning I was so naive. Like, uh, I think I mentioned this a few times before on a podcast, but it took me ages to get my first job. I think I might have got my first job when I was 19, right? Or something like that. And um, this isn't because I was a fucking rich kid because I wasn't because we were fucking dirt poor when, when, I, when I was young. But um, And I always needed a fucking job because I knew I wouldn't be able to get any bits of money before that. But um, luckily, in between the time of like 16 and 19, I kind of discovered sneakers and I was reselling shoes. So I was able to make money that way. But it took me ages to get my first job uh, because I was saying the truth for my CV, Right. Um, because think about it, right? I went to college, went to sixth form, didn't have any job there. And then I was trying to apply for jobs, you know, pre-uni and then during university. And when I'm going to hand out my CVs and I've got no experience apart from the two weeks of work experience that you do when you're in sixth, is it sixth form? No, you do, whenever you do, is it, I think you're 11, right? You do work experience when you have to go. And I, I went to do work experience at a weird fucking electronic shop, um, on Charing Cross Road. Like, you know, those electronic shops that sell everything. They have a digital camera, security systems memory cards like fucking just it's insane the amount of stuff they sell right and i did it for two weeks in in this store somewhere in west london um which is a fucking you know hellhole um the guy i did it with um from my school he quit after three days because it was that shit essentially we were like stuck in the basement um rearranging a stockroom that probably hadn't been rearranged in a decade right imagine those kind of old electronic shops where like even the boxes are old right old design boxes like logos are not used anymore just fucking just shit upon shit stocked in this store right i don't know how they're still in business but maybe because it's just a property thing i don't know but um i remember working there and that was the only experience i had on my cv so when i go to hand out my cv i'd have you know two weeks work experience working in a fucking electronic store in, in central London that no one knows about so of course i wouldn't get a job and it went on for ages until i realized i don't know who i spoke. you know when you speak to somebody and then you get you're like oh that's what I've been doing wrong. I spoke to somebody and they kind of, I don't know, they kind of maybe laughed at the fact that I was saying the truth in my CV and I was like, oh, so everyone does this, right? And I thought, okay, cool. And the moment I started to lie and started to fabricate and I invented a couple of stuff on my CV and said I worked here and I didn't work there or whatever it may be, automatically I got a job. Straight away, straight away. Oh, the fucking, look at this. Look at these hedge name glasses. Look what happens. Just, <laughs> lows. But yeah, the, the moment I lied on my CV is the moment I straight away got a job. I got I got high straight away the moment I started lying, so um it wouldn't it wouldn't um it, it, I wouldn't be surprised if whoever did design the triple H or whoever was part of designing the shoe part of the manufacturing part of the produ- production would then leave and then say they designed that triple S shoe because you know it's a fucking great shoe um I don't wear it as often as I should wear it because you know it's not the most comfortable shoe in the world I actually have a pair here there right i've actually fucked up a little bit which is not h- hard to do because i don't wear them as much as i should but can you see them there there they are bah, bah, bah. get that into frame come on get into frame get into frame there you see that yeah i don't wear them as much as much as i should do but they're a great shoe right and they'll probably go down in history because you know they they um uh invent what without probably realizing it right they were probably responsible for um, the emergence of the chunky shoe trend, right? Without the Berlin Struggle Triple S, I probably don't think we get the fucking cascading wave of trip of 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 thick soled shoes. Because it's weird too, because you not know a Jaden boot. I've got the Dr. Martin Jaden, right? I was wearing that for years when I was working at Dr. Martin's. I wore it every day. Um, I wore my Jaden boot so much that I had to get a new pair. I wore them out, like wore them out. I used to go everywhere out of them, right? They, they were my, those were my Dalston shoe of choice. And but they're only only really girl girls wore them and not really and not that many girls wore them to be honest at that time but mostly only girls wore them and um but now I've everywhere I go I see people wear, wear that that double sole Jaden shoes really strange it's a bit of a slow burner it took a while for it to get popular but now everyone's wearing them again it probably has to say it probably has a lot more to do with the fact that you know uh chunky shoes are in now so people maybe feel a bit more confident to wear them there's not as much social risk. Because people are a bit risk averse, they don't want to look like a weirdo in front of their friends. So now that chunky soul shoes are in, wearing a double sole Doctor Doctor Martin doesn't seem that obscene when you have something like this right out there, and you have people wearing those technos, those Nike technos are really popular, um, and a few other and the Monarchs, which are really big shoes. 
But anyway, um, so this guy from Balenciaga, anyway, this is a long way to say that this guy from Balenciaga, supposedly from Balenciaga, um, decided to launch his own collection of shoes, which I saw on Hype Beast the other day. Um, they look quality wise again just from screen they don't look that great right and um, they look like you know they look like the kind of shoe that you could get made in china if you had a sketch but i think overall the the idea is there you could probably see some lineage coming from the triple s design shoe especially the back of it right how it kind of extends out a little bit here you see this bit there can uh, my cursor there like i think this back bit there you can kind of see some lineage in it overall um again i'm not it's not necessarily a shoe for me i don't think um i'd probably have to maybe see it in real life to maybe get an act an actual representation of what it looks like um but you know interesting colors i'm sure people would like it and i think it's quite cheap too what's it called so it's called the shoes three five four zero three five why can't i say the number when it's right there uh, 53045 which is you know maybe the worst name in history but um it was, who was what's, what's his name after helping what's his name uh david tor tornain busel um is it Torne busel i think that may that might be french right has more than 25 years um in footwear design and currently still works under demina in Balenciaga while serving as creative director at claire i don't know what closure is um dub the shoe spell shoes backwards uh, the label is created to express a non-traditional footwear option that mixes European design with the athletic technology developed by the Chinese manuf by Chinese manufacturers. <laughs> Loves athletic technology, Chinese manufacturers in the same sentence. Um, with the inaugural release, Torain and co-founder Uriel Amor, a former LVMH and carried, yeah, of course, this is all French, also have a thick double sole pack to so price that foreign dollar, which is quite cool, isn't it? Foreign dollars is very cheap compared to, and why did it say direct to consumer? Uh, well, when will direct to consumer fall out of the current lexicon right everything's direct to consumer you should be able to buy things that you want from the store from the brand that you um are going to on their online store that should just be like an uh a standard thing it's not like a oh it's direct to consumer wow it's not that big of a deal really right or my or my bugging out it's direct to consumer that's how everything should be yeah i want to buy a panasonic camera i should go on panasonic.com and click cameras and be able to buy and have it shipped to my house, right? Or go on Amazon. It's not that it's not that big of a deal. But again, fashion fetishizes the weirdest things. Oh, direct to consumer. It's like, huh? Of course. Like, like the other day, I was watching a show studio panel and they were freaking out that products are starting to do Instagram stories. I was like, but it's just, of course. Like, this is this is this is this is, a, this is a time you live in. Like, you have to, you have to in order to kind of get your message out there to distribute. The stuff that you're doing, you have to be on social media. And a big part of social media is Instagram. Instagram has a feature called Instagram Stories. You use the fucking app. Like, I don't get why that was so weird. But anyway, going on to your shoes. Um, again, you've got red and orange colorway. They look similar colorways to the kind of... um, uh, What's that shoe called? The Hoka 1-1 uh, the, or the Hookah. Hookah 1-1. One one. Hokkai or whatever you, you pronounce it. Um, similar sort of colorways. You've got red and orange or orange and red. The light blue and um, white, which is probably my favorite color. I like it with a black sole. Um... It looks quite interesting, right? So you've got a midsole and then you've got the bubble in... No, you've got the, the outsole and then the, the bubble inside the midsole, which is a really interesting way to do the shoe. It looks like some of the paneling there on the back might be see-through. Again, the quality doesn't look the best, but again, it's the first run, right? So maybe they might need to, they might need to slowly iterate it out. I'm surprised they also manufactured it in China because I know these... Um, the triple S's that I have here, the first ones, the original ones, they, they were... These are Italian-made, right? But then they switched factories because I think it cost them too much to make in Italy. So now they're all made in China. Um, so maybe I was surprised that they started. They didn't start off making them in Italy first. But then again, maybe just because you know they were there when they were manufacturing them in in Italy for the Blanchard Ultra Plus and see how much it was. So it probably wasn't. It didn't probably make economical sense to do your first collection and launch them maybe in Italy. Maybe. Um, but you know they got all black pair, which probably is quite nice. Maybe looks a little bit similar to the buffalo sneakers i've seen people wear but yeah by and large pretty decent i think for for it four hundred dollars cheaper than most uh designer triple designer triple s looking shoes out there on the market um again i'm interested to see how they develop it and go forward maybe we're going to see a mid maybe we're going to see a high um some other iterations of it coming out or maybe different models different ranges because now the triple s is updated you know they've they've Maybe they might just update the materials and kind of make it like a modular. You know those modular phones that you take bits off and put them on other bits and pieces or whatever and put other bits on it. Maybe they might do a similar thing they did with the Triple S because the Triple S now, I think the sole, they've got like a clear sole, like an eye sole. They haven't necessarily updated the model. They've just updated the classic panels on it. Um, the updated models on the Triple S weren't as popular as the original one I've, I've seen. I've not seen that many people wearing them. You know the one that has got less, pan less um, paneling on it and it's all mostly nylon. 
you've seen those ones, right? The, the ones that came out in the last couple of seasons, they weren't as popular as the original one. So maybe they can recognize it in the sales and probably think, you know what, let's just kind of, let's just keep re-releasing the original by just changing elements of it, different color blocking and stuff. So interesting to see how they develop it overall, but it's called the uh, Shoes um, Free f- 53045. I can't say the numbers, which is shoes built backwards. Um, it's available now online on their website, um, which is shoes53045.com. Um, price at $400. Um, so yeah, check that out if you're interested in double big soul shoes. Um, da, 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 da. oh, and if you're short as well, they're, they're a great compliment if you're a short dude, right? And you don't want to wear fucking Cuban heels or whatever. Um, tip, um, chunky soul shoes. Number one, earn you cool points because you've got you know trendy shoes on. Number two, they're a talking point because you know the date or whatever you're seeing. Oh my god, love your shoes. And number three, you get some inches on you without having to fucking break your shins or whatever.